So um, the first person I'd like to introduce today is Helen Hardy of the Natural History Museum. She's going to be talking about Disco UK, unlocking the potential of UK natural science collections through digitization. Thank you, and uh, thanks for having us. Um, I'm Helen, I'm the Deputy Head of Digital Data and Informatics at the Natural History Museum London. Um, I lead the digitization of the collections at the Natural History Museum for the last eight years or so, and I am likely to be the Programme Director for Disco UK, um, or have at least some leading role in that project because of our collaboration with the Arts and Humanities Research Council. Quite what those roles will be and who will be called what is to be determined, but that's um, why I'm here to talk about Disco today. And I think we're here talking about Trials and triumphs. Um, there have been some trials on the way to getting the announcement that I'll talk about today. There will no doubt be some trials on the way to implementing it as well. But I think today we'll try and focus on the, the triumph that is getting a government announcement and commitment to fund a really big programme of mass scale digitization across the UK, across all sizes and types of natural science collections. Um, I'm going to try also, though, in this talk to balance that triumph with giving you some clarity about what you can and can't expect so that you don't get uh, too overexcited and so that we're all kind of on the same page about um, what's coming along. So what's been announced? Um, in March, we had the Secretary of State for Science visit uh, the NHM and announced DISCO UK. Um, DISCO UK stands for the Distributed System of Scientific Collections UK, and I'll come back to that name in a bit, um, as a 10-year programme uh, probably of around £155 million. Pounds. That was our preferred option. We still have to do a business case with multiple options, but that's the figure that's been announced, um, starting most likely in 2026-7, subject to those business case approvals. It's part of the UK Research and Investment Infrastructure Fund, so that money is earmarked, although we can't draw it down until that um, business case has been finalised. Um, and our collaborators win within UKRI on that are the Arts and Humanities Research Council. That might seem slightly counterintuitive, hopefully not given some of the connections and intersections we've been talking about this morning, um, but they have responsibility for all types of heritage collections in the UK as research infrastructure, so scientific collections as much as any other, um, and they're very conscious as well. We've worked with them over several years now to establish our credibility as a sector, the natural science collections, in terms of how we understand digitization, how we understand data, and how we can make a really credible economic benefit case for digitization um, that can persuade the government. So DISCO covers all sizes and types of UK natural science collections. We will not digitize everything. And of course, we will not completely digitize everything because there is probably no such thing you could add data forever. Um, however, everybody will have the opportunity to bid for a piece of the pie, as it were, and I'll explain a bit more about how that will work. The funding is divided between several things, but the, the vast bulk of it is to do digitization. And this for me is what is so exciting about Disco. We've had many big initiatives at institutional and level and beyond before, but they've all tended to focus on uh, either capital equipment without people, which we all know can be problematic, or they focused on research and research outputs, which is fantastic, but if you don't have critical mass of data to begin with, that's always gonna have some limitations. Um, so this time around, it is squarely about creating an infrastructure and recognizing that the data themselves are part of that infrastructure, that building the pipes without the content does not get you to where you need to be. So the majority is for digitization. Um, we're aiming to have more than 50% of the UK natural science collections digitally available by the end of the project. Um, we're not aiming for everything, partly because we don't know what and where everything is, um, partly because some things will lack critical data or will just not be, um, as it were, available or in a fit state for digitization, and partly because some things are already digitized, um, whether or not those data are, are available in a kind of um, joined up way. Um, I think Paul mentioned a figure that was in our original bid, um, which was 70%. Uh, that was of, quote unquote, relevant collections with those caveats that I've just mentioned. So we, we've now decided it's perhaps more prudent to refer to more than 50% of the, of the total. Um, that's out of uh, an estimated 137 million collections objects. That was based on some surveys we did. Uh, again, that's probably an underestimate. So um, we'll see where we get to, but we'll get as far as we feasibly can. There will be, as I say, competitive bidding processes throughout the programme. It will not be if you don't get your hat in the ring in 2026, you've lost out. It will be an ongoing process that will look at different collection types, different collection opportunities through the process. 
Um, and the rest of the money, uh, there'll be part that's spent on the infrastructure. I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. There'll be part that's spent on what we're calling a, a catalysis center, looking at um, what research can be done both to accelerate digitization itself, things like applying AI techniques to extracting data from label images, and what can be done with the data from the collections themselves so that we can continue to demonstrate quickly that impact because sometimes there's quite a long turnaround between data release, data use, research papers, and tangible uh, outputs of those of that research in terms of policy or, or other decisions. So we want to kind of make sure we've got some case studies that are speeding up that process and showing everybody what the point of all this is. A little bit of background on DISCO itself. Um, the first DISCO was DISCO EU, which is still ongoing. Uh, that sort of started in the NHM and is now led out of Naturalis uh, in the Netherlands. Um, and DISCO EU um, has the goal of digitally unifying the landscape of European natural science collections under common curation access policies and practices through a single infrastructure. It's the largest consortium of its kind ever. Um, it's gone through several phases already. Uh, it's completed a prepare phase, which was kind of thinking through um, many of the aspects of how it would work. It's currently in a transition phase, which is a shorter phase preparing for the implementation, and it will then go into construction. But DISCO EU does not pay for national or institutional digitization initiatives for the most part. Um, it may have some more specialized streams of funding. It provides an infrastructure where those things can come together and tries to address some of the gaps or some of the missing parts between existing pieces of digital infrastructure across Europe in that regard. So DISCO UK is both um, the UK's, if you like, node to provide content ultimately to DISCO EU, but more importantly, it's a thing I think we would want to do anyway, which is a partnership of um, the more than 90 natural science collections around the UK to harness the digital potential of collections and, and also I think to throw light on the impact of collections physically as well. So kind of to, to set out what is the point of all this stuff to remind people how relevant it is to, to the modern day, not just to kind of looking back in time um, at, at what things used to be and to provide access and insight in, a, in an open and fair way. The scope, as I've said, is all UK natural science collections. However, there are some limits on that scope. I'm afraid we don't do uh, Crown territories or overseas territories um, within DISCO, although I do think there'll be opportunities where things are on the edge of our scope later in the programme for kind of leveraging joint grants and other things to pursue uh, those areas. I hope so anyway. Um, we will work with thematic collections as well as regionally, and I'll say a bit more about that in a bit. And the focus will be on digitization for discovery. So enabling people to know what are in the UK's natural science collections and to do certain kinds of um, kind of high level analysis in terms of what things are and where they are particularly. Um, but that will mean core specimen data and images, um, 2D images for the most part, um, for the most part, not more detailed metadata, but there will be some exceptions to that. So what have we been doing so far? Because this did not come out of the blue. We had some uh, scoping funding from, um, from the Arts and Humanities Research Council at a small scale, which enabled us to put together some promotional material. So a booklet, a blueprint um, and, a, and a video. Uh, it enabled us to talk to um, some of you, hopefully many of you, um, in various regular uh, conversations to put those things together. We did a couple of surveys about what's in the UK collections and about um, your digital readiness and, and barriers. Um, we put together some training resources that was partly through DISCO EU as well. Um, and we have already up and running a pilot UK data portal which um, was working with the Global Biodiversity Information Facility and is a hosted portal. And again, I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. So we have a lot of good basics there. These are the training materials that are available now, the DISCO digitization guides. If you haven't seen this, I really recommend taking a look. If you're interested in digitization, um, they come from a range of different collections, but we have standardized uh, a format that includes both words and pictures and workflow diagrams in a standardized format. Um, and they're a community resource, so you can contribute your own workflows to this. There's a, a page about how to do that. Um, and there are also things like checklists of things to do before you start, what equipment people are using, best practices. There's a little bit of guidance in there about some of the rights issues you might come across. So this will continue to build up over time, but I think it's a really fantastic resource in a, in a fairly accessible format. 
how will we get data out there and how can we already get data out there? This is, I think, one of the key things for DISCO. It is not just about getting things out of the cupboards and imaging them. It is about mobilizing their data in a way that means that it's fair and linked and effective and having impact. Um, at the moment, we can uh, set up anyone who hasn't already been set up with institutional profiles on GBIF um, through the Global Registry of Scientific Collections. Uh, and my colleague Tara at the back has been helping people do that. Um, and, and that's a, a really great start because ultimately what we want is that kind of read through from these are the institutions, these are the kind of high level descriptions of some of the things that they have, and these are the specimen records. Um, so as a kind of first step, it's really get, great to get a, a record on GRCI and to be keeping that up to date. Um, GBIF have uh, a tool called the Integrated Publishing Toolkit, um, which supports um, flows of data and we can help people to start, we're starting to pilot with some UK collections how people can use that. Um, we have this Disco UK portal, which is often people don't need to look at the UK collections, um, but this is a way of, of, of drawing a data set out of GBIF that presents that nicely for those people that are interested in the data set from that perspective, including our political stakeholders. And also GBIF does some great impact tracking. Obviously GBIF, the clues in the name, they are biodiversity focused, not geodiversity focused at the moment, um, but we are working with them on that. At, and or there may be other uh, solutions for the geosciences community. We're considering that very actively, obviously, as an important part of the UK collections. Community activities, um, we're holding core stakeholder meetings. That's a kind of the group of those who've been most involved so far and also wider community meetings. We'll continue to do that. Um, we will have a memoranda of understanding for those who want to sign it. It's very light touch at the moment. It's more a kind of um, subscription to the vision, if you like, at the moment. When it comes to money, there will, of course, be more tangible agreements in place, um, but we'll be sending that MOU out soon um, if people are able to sign it. And it may be something that helps you engage, for example, your senior management teams in thinking about planning for DISCO. Um, we'll have engagement with various thematic communities, um, particularly those where the data are perhaps uh, a bit more complicated in terms of requirements. And we've been trying to make sure that we can leverage a bit of funding in the run up to this DISCO money. So things like capital equipment, um, where there's money available from government at the end of the year. How did we make the case? Um, I'm getting short on time, although I think we started a little late, so I'm hoping I might be given a tiny bit of grace. <laughs> oh, did we not? I'm just being slow. Okay. Um, how did we make the case? One thing that we focus on, so I think a lot of natural science collections have amazing case study stories about impact, and we've heard some of those over the last couple of days, but we knew that was not sufficient to unlock money at this scale from the UK government. Um, so we've done a couple of pieces of work. We did this analysis with Frontier Economics that shows potential fairly conservatively for £2 billion of benefit over 30 years based on these five sectors. And that was sectors where Frontier felt they could scope the size of the prize, if you like, for the UK fairly tangibly. And we felt we could supply sufficient information about the role of scientific collections to make a convincing case for what percentage contribution they could make. Um, and I encourage anyone who's interested to go and look at that paper and to kind of use it with your own stakeholders if it's relevant to them. We know a lot of you, it's more about, um, for example, local audiences. Um, we did also a piece of work looking at, okay, the UK data that are already on the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, what are they being used for? And what we found was the demand for them is higher than we even imagined. So 0.3% of occurrences data, point data on GBIF, is UK specimen collections at the moment, so it's tiny, but 12% of peer-reviewed publications cite those data. So they punch 40 times above their weight compared to other GBIF records. That's because of the taxonomic, historic, and geographic depth um, of those collections and the fact that they relate back to, to specimens, to vouchers, so they can be checked and verified. This is perhaps the important bit, so I should have given it longer than one minute, but I'll try and be very quick. Um, how is this relevant to you? NHM will be leading the practical aspects of Disco UK, um, but we will not be doing that alone. We expect, and this is very much a, a thing that we'll be discussing with all of you over the coming years, we make the detailed business case, um, that this will work partly through having hubs. So if you think about digitization teams, digitization kit, we need to be able to grant funding and place those in places where they can be used for a reasonable period of time, say at least a year, perhaps two. Otherwise you've got people who get employed for two months and then what do you do with them? Um, so there will be regional or thematic groupings of some kind. We expect there will be several types of 
funding process. So there may be a stream of funding that's for people who are kind of ready to go, a stream of funding that's for people who need training and perhaps support even to make that case for funding and that bid for funding, perhaps with auditing collections before they start, for example. And there will be a smaller stream of funding, which is about research driven and user driven digitization um, where there's a need for greater metadata. There are lots of opportunities for this besides research impact. Obviously, because the funding is through UKRI, the emphasis is on research impact, whether scientific or other. Um, but actually, lots of people are saying that they are excited about this because of being part of something, because of um, being able to highlight the amazing objects that they have, telling stories about those that they haven't been able to tell, getting some insight on what's in collections where there isn't local expertise, perhaps on the natural sciences or on particular types of objects and saving collections that are struggling. And I am on the last slide, you'll be happy to know, sorry. Um, some of the challenges um, that we're already aware of because we've been doing pilot work um, with uh, Isla in Bristol and with other areas as well and, and visiting some of the national uh, collections as well in, in Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland. The lo local landscapes, as you all know, are very compl complex, um, both in terms, of, in terms of governance, in terms of IT, uh, in terms of how data are kept, in terms of policies, processes, physical spaces, there are big questions here about how we have a national team of people who have consistent jobs, reward, et cetera, whilst allowing some local control and ownership of those resources. So who will be the employer is quite a question. Um, and of course, many of you, us included, I think, are keen to get going sooner rather than later, rather than sit on our hands for two years while we make a business case. Um, so that's the, the, the summary of quite a big and complex thing. But I hope... Um, I think this the triumph really is that government and UKRI have really recognised the place of natural science collections and the fact that this is kind of a, in a way, a no brainer investment that that, that getting these data out there is truly impactful um, for the challenges that the world faces today. So I think now all the work is, in a sense, in the detail and, and having that principle established is something we've been working towards for probably at least a decade. So it's really satisfying to have that out in the world. And I hope you're excited about it, too. And we look forward to doing it with you. It's not just for the NHS. Uh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Helen. I did give you 15 minutes, I promise. <laughs> um, and I think on behalf of all of us, I think we're just very grateful. And it's really interesting that you're doing such an amazing thing for natural science collections in this country. Does anyone have any questions, please? Uh, there's a microphone, are you OK? I'm happy to shout. Shout, great. Just a minute to repeat the question. <laughs> um, I saw a brief mention of humanities on there. Does that mean that libraries will be involved? I'm thinking of the BHL project, which obviously focuses much more on libraries. Will there be some kind of interconnection between the two? Uh, so the question is about um, humanities and the role of libraries in the project. Um, library digitization is outside the scope of Disco UK, but the kind of the whole point of digitization and fair data is to enable more data linkage and to think about those kind of issues. So we haven't talked, I don't think we've talked yet to BHL about this project, but there are people there who are aware of it certainly. And, and the kind of those, the dialogue that we have internationally um, obviously thinks about those topics as well. So yeah, I certainly hope there'll be opportunities there. On the humanities front, really like with like with all of the research done with the data that's in the hands of those who want to research it in a sense but um i definitely hope that this will unlock some new perspectives on our collections yeah glenn go for it this is probably to be integration key bit from all the things that um other things like the museum data service what my collection and the analysis is kind of all my efforts and energy into this so and then be nice and so the, I think so that should be audible. No, no? okay. <laughs> Still need to repeat the question. So the question was about um, the various aggregators in this space. Some of the work that AHRC are doing through Tank and the Museum Data Service, um, and to what extent it will be possible just to focus on Disco and have all those data joined up. I think the aspiration certainly will be that Disco provides a way where you can yeah, publish data once and have it distributed um, in a way that's that's well linked and well standardized. Um, and my colleague will be talking about one of the standards that's relevant to that in a moment. Um, so specifically, so we are talking to um, the National Biodiversity Network. Um, we're talking to um, Geocase and some of those 
portals, we are talking to uh, the Collections Trust about the Museum Data Service, which I think in the first instance, at least, will focus more on other types of heritage collections data. And um, I'm also part of a small group, which we hope eventually to expand, called the Collections Digitization Network, which is across the heritage sector, um, building on what was the Culturist Digital Digitization Task Force a few years ago in a different flavor of politics times. Um, and that looks at how Disco UK can be a pilot for wider types of heritage collections and data as well. So yeah, there's AHRC, we are constantly pushing our, our partners there to be a little clearer about how Tank and Riches and the Museum Data Service and Disco all work together, but it is, it's one thought process. It hasn't quite yet articulated what order those things will happen in, but no, I think we're, we're fairly confident that Disco will be a good way to get those data out that's then reusable. Brilliant. Okay, thank you so much. I imagine it will occupy many of our lives for many years to come. So, uh... Drop me a line with your follow-up questions. Also, uh, Tara Wainwright, Sally Jennings, Lawrence Livermore are all here and working on the project as well. So yeah, get in touch with any of us or catch us on the tours or wherever. Um, thank you so much. Thank you.